Patrick saying is positive. Seems Rod does not have quite the reputation. It's amazing that Rod has a name for himself in so short a time. I hope he overhears these conversations and is proud of himself. I certainly am. I'm on my way to the throne room when I hear one such conversation between two maids. So what do you think of the new dance instructor? Charles, I'll take it. Charles, I'll take it. Charles, do it. Do it. That was Now I'm sure maybe Karma. They giggle. I'm impressed someone so young has earned so much prestige in Brugantia. I can only imagine how talented he must be. And he's handsome the bear. I wonder what he looks like when he smiles. He always has such a scowl on his face. Do they ever tire of gossiping? But it's strange, isn't it? Sir Rod has visited the palace many times before. I wonder why. Oh! Oh? Do you suppose he's courting Princess Emmeline? They seem very close. You know that, Princess. <laughs> no, that's funny. Oh, maybe you're right. I nearly choke on my own breath. I have to put the hand in my mouth to keep from laughing. You know what's strange, though? The fact that they look so similar. That's rather odd. Do you think he could be courting Princess Lucette? Think. From what I overhear, Princess Lucette has never expressed interest in any other suitor. Well, I guess I'm grateful no one's put on to that tidbit of gossip, at least. I shake my head as I make my way to the throne room. Ron and Emmeline look up in unison when I step inside. Emmeline is immediately shoves her hands behind her back and smiles at me. It's a strange, strained smile. Hello, Lucette. Are you okay? <laughs> of course. Why wouldn't I be? Her voice actually squeaks, and I'm aware of whatever has been confused or... I'm unsure whether to be confused or concerned. I raise yes. an eyebrow. Um... Rod gives Emmeline a gentle nudge. Aren't you going to be late for your piano lessons, Em? Oh, you're right. I'll see you both later. Emmeline makes a beeline for the door, and slowly as she gets closer to me, she turns and, obviously hiding something behind her back, continues to sidestep towards the door. You're acting strange. It's just your imagination. The last thing to leave her mouth before she exit is an excruciatingly awkward laugh. Rye looks like he's trying not to cringe. Emmeline is such a terrible liar. I'm trying not to cringe. I turn around expectantly. Um, I'm guessing we should stay silent? A second. Yeah. Stay silent. Obviously, keeping some secret from me, but I'm more amused than irritated. I can't help but smile. I can't help the smile on my face. What is it? Nothing. Nothing at all. Rod smiles as if a little, if not a little awkwardly, before turning to a nearby table to look at his music sheets. The table is new. What I had placed here for our lessons. So, have you heard the latest gossip? Rod groans. Please tell me you're not actually interested in that. I assure you this gossip is a little more entertaining. How so? I overheard a rumor you were courting Emmeline today. Rod stares at me in horror. I laugh at his reaction. 
You're just messing with me. No, it's the truth. Who started this rumor? Do they not realize how ridiculous it is? Rod pinches the bridge of his nose. Why did it have to be M? There was nothing about you. I suppose we have no chemistry. That just means our acting is impeccable. How much longer are we going to pretend, Rod? It's been two years. We made the wish that we didn't have to hide, so why are we still doing this? Rod looks away, eyes distant. Are you still afraid people think you're unworthy because you're a commoner? Rod flinches. I saw what mother went through after marrying the king. I know it must have been a different, a difficult transition, but Ophelia is well loved. I look at him perplexed. Were you scared you would have to go through the same thing as Ophelia? I don't care what people say about me. I'm concerned what they'll say about you. Rod, you already know I don't care what others say about me. I'm no stranger to shutting people out. I've lived most of my life being hated by this king and Rod. I think I can handle myself just fine. You're right. Maybe it is me after all. Rod. Rod abruptly shrugs, as if shirking the worry from his shoulders. Let's not talk about this right now. I just remembered I had something I wanted to discuss with you. Oh? What's this all of a sudden? About the letter you sent. Oh, right. I suppose I sound very angry in that letter, but... How did you even read it? I sent it out three days before you arrived. Emmeline retrieved it from the messenger before it was sent out. He frowns. I read it. I see you're still mad at me for making that wish. How could it not be? You sacrificed so much only to leave. You know the reason I made that wish, Lucette? Yes, I do, but that does not mean I cannot regret it on your behalf. Before we made a decision to hide together, now you have made it so that you are the one who must sacrifice everything. It's not anger, but sadness that causes sparks to jump at my fingertips. I close my eyes and take a deep breath to calm myself. Are you alright? I'm fine. I open my eyes again, the sparks are gone. Rod sighs. I wanted this, Lucette. Not just for you, but for myself, too. Being a prince was a constant reminder how much I lied to the world about who I was. With this wish, I can start living a life crafted by my own hands. Before I can say anything else, Rod has closed the distance between us and presses his lips to mine, effectively cutting off my words. Afterwards, he pulls me back and looks right into my eyes, his face flushed. It strikes me that this has happened more than a few times. But must we, you always do that so suddenly? Rod grumbles and shrugs. That was the easiest way to get you to stop talking. Anyway, I love you, Lucette. I would do anything for you. No matter what happens in the future, I know I will never regret this wish. Rod puts a hand on my shoulder and squeezes. Stop worrying about all this, okay? I promise it'll work out. I cannot promise, but I will certainly try. That's good enough for me. 
Now. He reaches for my hand and plants a kiss on the back of it. Shall we continue to where we left off yesterday? I smile as I place my other hand on his shoulder. We shall. Not on the shoulder. Fire. These past few days Rod has been teaching me one of the grunting dances he learned. This dance in particular is full of energy and involves a lot of twirling and sidesteps. Rod leads me into spin after spin. We have become comfortable enough dancing with each other that we do not need to focus on our steps when we move. I'm glad because it allows me to focus on his serene expression. Is there something on my face? I shake my head. Nothing but your wonderful smile. I was just thinking how much I miss dancing with you. Same here. But now we can do it every day. Yes, only how much longer will every day last? By the time the song has stopped, I'm almost out of breath. A job well done, Lucette. You still need to practice your footwork, but you're learning quickly. Rod leads me to a chair and hands me a glass of water. Thank you. I gulped down at least half the glass before facing Rod. The dance was exhausting. How are you not out of breath? I've had a lot of practice. Once you get used to the steps, they've become cathartic. Just need to build stamina. It's a dance that suits Brigantians, though. <coughs> They're very lively. I look at Rod, curious. Can you tell me more about life in Brigantia? Rod seems to ponder quietly for a few moments. After some consideration, he pulls out a chair and sits beside me. He begins by telling me how difficult life was for him at the beginning, especially given that he'd never left the kingdom before. He was constantly homesick, but Claude and his family were able to lighten that burden by being overly accommodating. At first it was overwhelming. Eventually, however, Rod became accustomed to the royal family's enthusiasm. He tells me briefly about them. When he learned, brings up Lance, Claude's brother, I cannot help but wonder. I've spoken to Lance a few times. He seems more cord cordial than Claude, but I don't know him well. I wonder what he's like. Rod crosses his arms. Being a student was much easier than being a teacher. Back when I lived here, all I needed was to all I needed to do was study and learn to build a gun. I might not have been good at most of my classwork, but at least it was straightforward work. Really? Emily told me that once you were a fast learner. She said you knew how to sing, dance, cook. Rod flushes. I excelled in those things because I enjoyed them, not because I was a good student. I look at him, curious. Agreed. Never heard you sing or watch you cook. Rod shrugs. Dancing was the easiest way to express myself when I lost my voice. Now it's just, it feels like the most natural thing to focus on. But traditional classwork never came easy to me. I thought the only thing you were bad at was expressing your feelings. Rod's cheek turns an endearing shade of pink as he scowls at me. Wrecked. Hey, he's bad. Okay. Alright, now that he's here, Charles, fuck off. No, it's fine. Bad. You are here, you are brought for one character. <laughs> for like 20 seconds. There are two characters so made. Hit one and a half. Read the line. <sighs> like me, you're the worst. He sighs as he glances out the window at some distant sight. So what are you bad at, then? Why would you ask me that? Because I'm curious. You have to promise not to laugh. Rod stares down at his hands and sighs. 
History, politics, fencing, remembering dates and names, and combat. Two of those are the same thing. My swordsmanship is atrocious. There's a clear distrust in Rod's eyes when he confesses this to me. His usual stoic facade is broken, and the rest he before me looks vulnerable and anxious. I can't help but smile. Why are you smiling? I'm always happy when you open up to me. It makes me feel like I'm a part of your life. Then from now on, I'll make sure to tell you even the little things. Like how I'm instead learning to build a gun instead of a sword. This isn't D&D, Willie. Not love with that. that attitude. It's nowhere close this round. I'll make him a fighter. No. I hate the fact that I'm seeing Percival. Shut up, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Once my dance lessons are over, I head back to my room to practice creating simple potions. It's a solitary task, one I normally practice in my free time. However, probably because I'm also, eh, probably because I'm always so bored during the experiments. I sit up groggily, realizing blatantly I've fallen asleep at my desk. Various potion ingredients lay scattered on the surface. I stare at the clock. Start of the next day? How in the world did I sleep for last night's dinner? A knock sounds at the door. Wait, Charles. Someone. Anyone. <laughs> your, your Highness, His Majesty requires your presence in the th throne room. Ah, understood. Uh, hold on, the music's kind of loud in my ears. Ah, okay. Understood. I wonder what he wants from me so early in the morning. Father seated on his throne when I enter. Rod stands before him. Who was doing the king? Charles. You can do I want to hear it. Alright, yeah, I want to hear it. Who was the boy they going to say? Oh, you just freaking changed it. Ah. <laughs> oh, sure. You'll screw it. Ah, actually, that makes sense. You'll screw it up when he's here. Understandable. I, I wanna he okay, now I want to hear the voice you were doing. You want me to do normal voice? Yeah. Dude, do, do whatever voice you were doing. I want to hear I it. I was at normal. You cut out there. Now I want to feel like it. Old Irish. Okay. I should have taken over after all. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. No, no, you shouldn't have. Keeps double clicking. All right. Good morning, Father. I approach Riley. Are you here for an important announcement, Rod? Would you like to do the honors? I'm surprised by a glowing smile on Rod's face. I'm just sitting here thinking, like, do I have to make Lisette have a Scottish accent now because she's his daughter? Because I'm going to fail so bad. No. That would be great. No, for the love of God, please don't. <laughs> I'm going to fix I'm going to fix this. I don't know. I don't know which I found funnier, the f what Dallin said or what the screen currently says. Yes. I've officially asked permission from His Majesty to court you, Lucette. I stare between two of them with wide eyes. When did this happen? About five minutes ago. Damn. Last night. Last, last night. You are already asleep, so we thought it would be best to wait until the morning to tell you. I turn my baffled gaze to Rod, who's still smiling. I love and hate it at the same time. Same. <laughs> <laughs> I missed you, Charles. Love is a Goddamn. <laughs> I thought about what you said. I agree. It's the time we stop hiding. There's no reason for it anymore. I move before I can think. In a heartbeat, I have my arms wrapped around Rod's waist and my head on his shoulders. It feels as if a momentous weight has suddenly been lifted from my shoulders. There's no more hiding. Which means I no longer have to hide my affection for him. News of our courtship spreads like wildfire. 
I'm accustomed to gossip and I'm unfazed by the attention. But I can tell Rod is unnerved by the sun's spotlight. Still, we both do our best to continue our daily routines. I do notice, however, that Rod has become busier in recent days. He tells me he's been meeting my father about the important matters. I figure it's about the upcoming ball. I've just finished my dance lessons for the day. The Rod is meeting with father in the throne room. I have no such obligations and decide to return to my room to read up on potion making. I'm passing by the dining hall when I pause, hearing voices inside. What's I hate it when they do. Unknown voice, go down. You're just coming back. <laughs> sure. And because he was so embarrassed, he ended up running away. I hear laughter. That definitely sounds like Rod. Those are voices. I can't wait to hear who I just gave Goofy to. I push up. The There's only the one way to find it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus! Yes, it's <laughs> oh, one of the two. Yes. <laughs> it could have been oh, Seppi. No. Ophelia and well, Emmeline look up as I enter. I'm shocked to see Seppi there too, sitting on Emmeline's shoulder. Poor Rod and Seppi were inseparable, <clears throat> but ever since Rob returns, I barely see them oh, together. I wonder why. I think maybe it might have been. Oh, hello, Lucek. Perfect timing. We were just talking about. Emily cups her hand to her mouth, ca casts a shepherdess look over my shoulder, and whispers, Herpicious. "Rod." Obviously, Ophelia beckons me over to the table and turns back to Sebby. So, what happened after that? Oh, you gave Goofy to Sebi? Yeah. Damn. Should I do it? I, no, I was hoping that it was to Ophelia or Emily, because that would, would have been funnier. Much funnier if it was them, but... He refused to step out of his room for the whole day. When others asked after him, he feigned sickness. Emily sighs. Why did he just refuse the gifts? Not because most of them were from noble women, or refusing out... <laughs> And refusing outright would have been insulting. What is this about gifts, noble woman? Oh, oh, hell. Oh, I was just telling everyone how popular Rod is with Briganti and noble women. He was sent various gifts from young women on Heart's Day. And because he didn't want to refuse them, he avoided everyone altogether by staying in his room. And He's yeah, smart. Really didn't realize I'm glaring until Ophelia places a hand on my arm. Lisa? I forced a scowl from my face immediately, not even sure why it was there in the first place. You don't need to worry, princess. He told him he was in love with someone else. You can feel my face heat at his words. Aw, you're blushing. I am not. Liar. I promise to look after Rod, and I intend to keep that promise. And that goes for you too, Princess. If I had to drive away a hundred women, I'd do it. Ah, if a tiny plush bunny attempting to scare off a gaggle of girls makes me laugh. Before I know it, I become absorbed in the conversation. Hours later, when our conversation winds down, I make my way back to my room to read my potions book. Today, I am going to the margin for one of my magic lessons. Or at least, that was my plan. Just yesterday, however, I received a letter from Parfait saying that there was a change of plans. Everyone at the margin has decided to throw a small celebration for Rod and me. At first, Rod seems reluctant to go, but he couldn't refuse after Parfait personally requested his presence. Mm. Forgot she's end... not yeah. yeah! She's it's okay, we had the same realization. In the end, the two of us agreed to go by carriage. Yeah, we got to see your new design. In black and white, though. Rod is already I staying by the carriage when I arrive. I smile when our eyes meet, but Rod only nods. He se his mind seems elsewhere. I immediately notice the dark circles under his eyes. Everything all right? I am fine. Just didn't catch much sleep last night. I was up reading the king's king's books far past midnight. 
with King's foot. I found out only a few days ago that Father started lending Rod specific study materials. Apparently these books are meant to teach Rod more about the policies and rules governing our kingdom. I hope you're not overworking yourself. Rod smiles and is tired, but thankfully a reassuring smile. I'm not. He holds up a hand and hands me, helps me to the carriage. No sooner have we entered the town than the townsfolk, noticing a royal carriage, begin to wave at us. The response is uplifting before the masses avoid me. Now things are different. Things first began to change when I made a public apology after breaking my curse. Townsfolk were very skeptical of whether or not I would follow my mother's footsteps as a town bearer, bearer, but their trust began to grow when I started dispelling fairy tale curses. Seth. I look out the window and see a little boy running to keep pace with the carriage. Can I give you something? A gift? Please. I order the carriage to stop and step out. The boy flashes a toothy grin. Then, without any preamble, he holds out a lily. I got this for you, princess. I take the flower from him with a gentle smile. Thank you. The boy clasps his hands behind his back and smiles shyly. Someday, I'll become a prince and marry you. Oh my god. I am simultaneously bemused and taken aback by the confession. I appreciate your gifts, but I'm afraid I'm already courting a prince. I gesture at Rod, who stands between me and the carriage. The boy blinks. Wait, he's not a real prince, right? I think we should pick the top one. I want to go. I want to go bottom. bottom one. Is a real good way to screw him over. Let's go top. The bottom one's funny. Uh, Damn it. All right, that's three for top. Yeah. Does not matter. <laughs> you need to be a prince to marry a princess. Rod, who has been silent the whole time, suddenly starts speaking. Not being a prince just means you have to work a little harder. The boy seems to shine with hope at the prospect. Yeah, I'll work hard too, so I can live in a palace someday. Rod's responding smile is Wayne. He suddenly looks incredibly tired. We should leave Lucette. They're waiting for us. I give the boy my heartfelt thanks before stepping back into the carriage. Work harder. Rod mumbles to himself as he's there suddenly at the floor. Rod, are you alright? He looks up suddenly, as if I startled him from his thoughts. Yes, I'm fine. He smiles weakly before turning his attention back to the view outside the window. Something definitely seems off about him. Apparently that wasn't the right answer. <laughs> I feel so validated. <laughs> Princess is set! Rod! Welcome! Nisa is the first to welcome us when we arrive at the Marchant. No sooner have we stepped inside, however, that another person makes themselves known. I'm going to guess it's Karma. There are two people this could be right now, damn it! I'm gonna so guess do neither of them! Pretty sure it's Karma. Just, just skip ahead. One if it so isn't everyone's it. favorite princess. Oh no, Chevalier. Ah! Uh, Chevalier's I smile know. is as sunny as always. He steps forward and sweeps into a courteous Roll bow. Roll that back. <laughs> Please? Okay, okay, no. okay, okay. Wait. Damn it. <laughs> if it isn't everyone's favorite princess. Goop. Yeah, Okay, you curtsy. Alright. It's been a while, Princess Lucette. That it has. Hello, Chevalier. Ever since Chevalier's curse was broken, he's been working at his clinic. Gone is the tenacious flirt I used to know, and his place is an optimistic doctor. Oh. Who still looks who still makes ill-timed jokes. There it is. 
Soon we are surrounded by people. Rod stands awkwardly in the center of the room, surrounded by Chevalier, Anise, Delora, and Parfait. Walt is seated away from the commotion, leaning on an armrest with a grin on his face. Parfait's cousin, Senna, is seated by the window, reading a book. He's not greeted either of us. Hmm. Maybe this is just my imagination, but... Delora raises an eyebrow. Her Royal Highness is looking particularly buoyant today. And are your cheeks red? Uh, what? <laughs> Dora, you must tease the set so much. And she still looks like she's dying. What the hell? Or Fabian's. Well, she's got a new dress. Being able to flaunt one's love is always the thing to celebrate. She looks better than she did. Yeah. And... She looks better than she did in the first some one. of the other storylines. Like, I, I Dad! It's she, I get it, it's because she's breathing. Laura <laughs> looks at me and snorts. Who are you, and what have you done with the princess? I still can't believe you fell in love. I bristle at the words. It's not as if this is news. And anyways, what's that supposed to mean, Dora? Sorry, princess. You're just too much fun to tease. But in all seriousness, I'm glad you found someone just as stubborn as you to cherish. Wow. <laughs> I'm standing right here. Laura turns her grin to Rod. You must have some magic of your own. Being able to melt the ice princess with heart. See, I told you he could teleport. Come now, Delora. You're embarrassing them. They make it far too e easy, Parfait. Rod turns away with a grumble, arms crossed. Chevalier breaks a momentary silence with an easygoing laugh. <laughs> it really is a pleasure to see you again, Sir Rod. I haven't seen you since you left for Brigantia the first time. I believe the last time you were... He pauses, considering. Well, you're much shorter, but now look at you. You're almost as tall as the rest of us. He reaches out as if to hand, set a hand on Rod's head, but Rod pulls away with a grimace. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> look at his grumpy face! He's so grumpy! <laughs> What do you mean, almost as tall? He's gonna be besties with Senna. Walt pointedly clears his throat and steps between Rod and Chevalier. <laughs> so, how are things in the palace lately? Rod's expression softens. I can tell he is relieved by the change of subject. They're alright. Busier than normal? But that's to be expected with the news. Hmm. Chevalier steps forward and squints at us in turn. What? There are dark circles under your eyes. Have you been under more stress lately? Rod raises an eyebrow. It's rude to impede on someone else's space. Uh, my apologies. Shall I take a step? I'm good this game. There's, there's a few people that just look fucking fantastic. And I'm fine. Although Chevalier is quiet, I can tell by the wrinkle between his eyebrows that he's unconvinced. Before he can say anything else, I decide to offer my own opinion. Jesus. I don't know. What, what did he respond to in the first game? Because I don't remember. Um, 
He kind of liked being left alone. Yeah, that's true. Maybe he's doing well. He's doing better than he was. <laughs> that's fair. That's technically true. Yeah, I don't know if he can like call him out and be like he's under more stress. So. Yeah, cause like I'm on the fence, cause like I feel like he would appreciate us not saying this, but like I just feel like lying is the wrong answer too. Yeah, but at the same time, we didn't call him out last time, and it was the and that turned out to be the right answer. So yeah, uh, go with he is doing well. I I think that one's right. that one seems more appropriate, but we'll see. All right. I We've Actually, already no, got, about... like, a bunch of wrong answers already, but whatever. Okay. Fine. No, pick it. Want. No, keep picking he's doing well, but I honestly think that it might be he's under more stress, and she'll twist it into, the official news has been made that he's courting me. Well, they already know that. They're throwing a celebration. Yeah, no, like, that is all the more reason uh, for us to say he's under more stress because of this. Well, we'll find but out. But, no, no, oh, okay. he's doing well anyway. Like, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. needs it as cover for what's actually going on. I get you. Maybe. Yeah. Anyway. Like, I didn't a, think about that until just now, and I went, oh, wait a minute. He's just been busy, is all. He's working as a dance instructor and taking lessons with the king. Our concern is unwarranted and unnecessary. Chevalier smiles. Sorry, I am by my nature a warrior. It's true. Chevalier takes his work seriously. A little too seriously, in my opinion. Lady Delora, I'm only trying to keep my patients healthy. He shakes his head. Anyway, I am relieved I'm just overthinking this. I lean closer to Rod and whisper in his ear as the conversation carries on. You're not allowed to overwork yourself. Understood? Rod sighs. Understood. He smiles, but doesn't reach his eyes. Somewhere nearby, a book snaps shut. Oh, that's oh, Cinna. Uh, yeah, no, this one is obvious. If that's not Cinna. <laughs> Must you all be so loud? Cinna approaches, book tucked under his arm. That's why a person can't read in peace in this place. Dude, we're literally throwing a party. <laughs> He stalks out of the room with a glare affixed to his face. There's silence for a few moments, then he leaves. Then Chevalier laughs. laughs. The tiny lord is lively as always. Yay, this is back. <laughs> tiny Already lord. Why does he always come up with the strangest nicknames? I guess, that's, I guess that's one way of describing him. He may seem temperamental, but I assure you, Cinnamon is quite pleasant once you get to know him. Oh, they give the name right away. I glance at Rod. Seems like a certain someone I know. Rod says nothing, but as I, even as I watch, he stifles me on. His eyes look classy. Exactly how many hours of sleep did you get last night? An hour or two. Rod, you're definitely pushing yourself too hard. Chevalier is right. You should take better care of yourself. I know you. You always push yourself. I just... Rod shakes lost, his head. Lost track of time. Never mind. It's nothing. What? I just know there's something on your mind, Rod. Rod responds with a smile when I continue to scowl at him. He plants a kiss on my forehead. Huh. 
I'm happily wrong. I swear it's nothing important. Don't worry. I'll get some rest when we get back to the palace. Fine. <coughs> but not all of the old boarders are present today. We decided to make the most of our small reunion. Anise prepares a small meal for dinner, and the gathering is lively. It's a shame Sir Garland and Lady Jurian couldn't be here. It's been months since we saw Prince Claude. Knights want me to apologize on their behalf. They have been busy treating new recruits. Last time Claude wrote, he said he was busy with his duties. I doubt he'll be free anytime soon. I'm glad he still sends us letters every so often. I do rather miss having Miss Karma around. Chevalier groans. Mm. Speak for yourself. Miss Karma was always staring daggers at me. With good reason. Lady Delora. Parfait laughs. I'm sure we'll get the chance to have a bigger reunion soon. The conversation goes on, but I notice one person has remained quiet throughout. Rara has not spoken a word since we started eating. Passed out. Is it because he's tired? Stressed? Or is there something else on his mind? Or he's passed out. I hope I can get to the root of whatever it is soon. I guarantee he passed out. <laughs> oh, never mind. No more secrets. Okay, chapter three. Abby, we'll I never know, find out. I know you have somewhere to be at midnight. Do you want to keep going or should we call it here? Um, I don't have to get off until midnight. Okay. Well, like, we could do another like chapter I'm, then. I, I leave after midnight. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll do another chapter then. When we returned to the palace last night, Rod was immediately retreated to bed, or retired to bed. I was up all night thinking about him and how strange he's been acting. I'm resolved to pry some answers from him today, which is why I'm standing outside the throne room, waiting for him to finish his lessons with Emmeline. Heart sinks when Emmeline exits with a gloomy expression on her face. Did something happen? Rod looks exhausted. That's what I intend to find out. Whatever it is, I'm sure you'll figure it out. I hope so. Emmeline gives me a confident pat on the shoulder as I enter. Inside, Rod is standing by the window, his back to me. Rod? When he turns to face me, he looks down trodden, but it's enough to make my heart sink. Oh, we'll be set. May I speak with you? There's a long pause before he nods. I said this yesterday as well, but you didn't seem well when we were having lunch at the marching. Are you alright? I'm fine. It is. You keep saying that, and I know it's not the truth. Do you trust me so little? Rod's expression sh shudders. Never. I trust you with my life, Lucette. Talk to me. I move closer, close enough to examine his face. The dark circles are still there, and I can tell from his rigid posture that he's tense. Why are you up again last night? I thought you said you were going to rest early. I did go to bed early, but falling asleep is another thing entirely. What kept you awake? I just have a lot on my mind. My God, and you are impossible, child. Is there anything I can do to help? Rod shakes his head. Thank you for worrying about me, Lucette, but this is something I need to sort out myself. I know this great option that might work, and it's a it's a real shot. It's a real like long shot in the dark here. But you have a talking stuffed animal who can read your mind. 
Uh, not anymore. Remember? Solution. He can't anymore. Out. He can't do it constantly. He just gets but when he pries, it works. You need, to, you need to stop pushing yourself, Rod. We all have our limits. Rod stiffens. I know that, but I didn't sacrifice everything just to hit a wall like this. He offers a feeble smile. You know what? You're right. Maybe the rest will do me some good. I'll see you later, Lucette. He heads for the doors, shoulders slouched beneath some invisible weight as he exits. Sudden solitude falls on my shoulders like a cold blanket. I, I wish suddenly, with all my heart, that he never made that wish. Rod seems to only become more frazzled over the next couple of days. There has been no improvement in his condition. He tells me that his exhaustion stems from the stress he's under to meet everyone's expectations, and he just needs to become accustomed to them. He says that every day and there's still no chance or change. This can't go on. I'm worried about his health. I force myself to stop pacing. He's not worried about himself, and perhaps I ought to make this about me. I can tell that I, my worry for him makes it impossible for me to focus on anything. I nod to myself and made my mind up. Walk out of the room to find Rod. I ask her in the palace, though through my search of though my search is extensive, Rod is nowhere to be found. Where is he? I'm just about to turn and bend in the corridor when Emmeline suddenly appears. Oh, who's that? Emmeline. I heard you've been talking around about Rod. Yes, do you know where he is? Emmeline crosses her arms and regards me thoughtfully. I do. Let's talk in private? Oh no. Talk in private? Why? I concede, regardless of my confusion. We can speak in my room. I'll order some tea to be delivered. On my command, the maid prepares and serves us biscuits and tea. I dismiss them once they have set everything on the table, then turn to Emmeline expectantly. So, why are we having a private discussion? Well, it's about Rod, but I'm sure you knew that. Don't tell him I told you anything, okay? I won't tell, I promise. Emmeline smiles, looking a little defeated. He's in the forest today, and he'll be there until sunset. The forest? What is he doing there? Well... Emmeline's eyes flit to the biscuits on my plate. She fidgets, looking uncertain. It's okay, you don't have to tell me. I'll find out myself. Sorry. Do you at least have some idea of why he's acting so strange? Rod says he trusts me, but I assume there's something he feels more comfortable telling Emmeline. They are siblings, after all. Emmeline hesitates a moment before answering. I do, but not because he's willing. he willingly told me about it. Emmeline sips absently at her tea. You know how Rod is. He can be so secretive when it comes to his own matters. It's a severe understatement. I'm sorry for not saying anything. I didn't want to put myself between the two of you. I know this is a personal matter. So why are you telling me where I can find Rod now? I've seen his exhaustion, same as you, and I'm worried about him. He won't listen to me, so I'm hoping he'll listen to you. Does Ophelia know? Yes and no. Mother knows he's stressed, but I doubt she knows how much he's been pushing himself. I sigh as I set down my cup. Thank you for telling me this, Emmeline. Emmeline smiles. Good luck, Lucette. After Emmeline excuses herself, I head out to search for Rod in the forest. I hear the familiar, but no less shocking, ring of metal against metal as I enter the forest. It's the sound of battle. Sparring knights? But why would they be practicing in the forest? There are knights surrounding the perimeter of this forest, so I know that whoever is fighting has permission and reason to be here, but I cannot imagine what it is. I quietly weave my way through the trees, only stopping when I spot two men sparring in the distance. Once I duck behind the tree, I stare wide-eyed at the sight before me. Again. Are you sure? Maybe it, it would be best to take a breather. 
What is happening here? Last told me before that his swordsmanship is terrible, so I'm perplexed to see him stand before Garland with a sword, sweat dampening his forehead. I insist. Rogers barely manages to block Garland's blow as he swings again at him. The force of the hit makes Rod stumble and he trips and falls. Sir Rod, are you alright? I'm fine. Rod grasps Garland's hand and gets back to his feet with a groan. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have put so much power behind the last strike. You don't have to apologize. I'm the one who didn't react the right way. Rod wipes his forehead with the back of his hand. Let's do it again. One more time. Despite his clear exhaustion, Rod's eyes are filled with determination. These look like lessons, but why didn't you tell me about them? Why is he taking them in the first place? Most importantly, why must all this remain a secret? Yet here he is, keeping a secret from me. Um. Leave, and then go bug Garland about it later. Uh, I think we should just leave if he wants to keep it secret for now. Yeah. And we confront him later. Yeah, I vote leave. Okay. Madeline got up, so, uh...